Hello guys, welcome back to Kerbal's Base Uh Not picking up where we left off, you know, when we were out in orbit and trying to get to the moon and stuff. I will be going over the basics, the very, very basic, for all those who want to get into Kerbal Space Program, but don't quite know the controls or don't quite understand what they're doing. So, first off, I'm going to point out what's what. This, of course, is the launch pad where you can set the ship that you want to, of course, launch. This is your um, uh, fucking dish to see all your flights in progress. Because of course we have Bubba, Bobby Joe, Bobby Joe in orbit. But uh, of course we're not going to fly as him right now. And that's that. You have the space plane hangar where you can build space planes. But I would not recommend doing it until you know firmly what you're doing. And then you of course you have the VAB, which is the uh, Vehicle Assembly Building. Now, to start off with, you have pods. You have different types of pods. You have remote guidance, so you don't have to have anyone inside it at all. Uh, you have your, of course, your normal ones, where you have your MK3 cockpit that holds three people. You have your Command Pod Mark 1, which holds one person. And then, of course, it, it, it does tell you, I mean, crew capacity free, crew uh, capacity free, uh, crew capacity one. So, of course, all these down here are like unmanned pods, and then everything up here is all manned. So, you've got one, 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 three, three, one, two, and nil. Zero. Zip. Nada. And then of course you've got the external command seat which is just simply for anything else that you want to lose for a Kerbal to be able to fly something. But we're going to start off with the very basics. So <clears throat> as you can see, very simple command board. Right, propulsion. These are all your engines up here. It cuts off right about here. You, could, you can of course use a turbo engine, but of course that won't have any fuel to go anywhere so it's pretty useless. <laughs> And then, of course, you have all your fuel. So you have your, uh, from your small fuel tanks, which are probably these. And then, of course, all the way up to your big fuel tanks, which are these. And, of course, these, as you've seen me use in previous episodes. Now, stuff like this I haven't actually used yet, or like this. I think they're purely prosthetic, and you can float very nicely with those. Pardon me. And then of course you have the RCS fuel tanks, which are for your um, uh, RCS thrusters. And of course you do have these, which you might be wondering, well, what are they? Are sure it is RCS, but no, these are in fact normal engines, which are just smaller engines. And of course that's the Rocco Max, and this is the Rocco Max, but of course this is substantially bigger than that. <laughs> but they're useful if you want to um, <clears throat> put an engine somewhere where you can't. Then of course you've got the external fuel conduct. Now the first thing you plug it on, say um, let's have let's have an example. Let's get this and get that. Right. So if we put that there, and then put that on the side. If we do this, that into that, the first thing you pull it on, it will drain the fuel from this into that, which wouldn't make much sense because this one would be being used first and. So about that guys, just a brief distraction. But yeah, that is the uh, external fuel conduct. So now that you know what that does, you can use that, but there really is no use doing it unless you have like an asparagus, uh, asparagus system or external fuel ports, which you wanna go into one, but you're not using. But yeah, that's, that's the basics of uh, propulsion. <coughs> Sorry for my chest. Now, there's the uh, now here we're in the control, so RCS is in the control because well, obviously you can control it manually, and then you have as a place anywhere seven linear RCS, and you can literally place this fucker any anywhere at all, well almost anywhere, just not under there because that's where everything else goes. But yeah, <clears throat> this is the simplistic uh, SAS module. Now. Is the stability aug uh, augmentation system spin auto stabilizer sickness avoidance solution 
whatever you choose to call it, it makes the ship start spinning around. So that's very basic. And now the advanced SAS, after many years of research, Deedler Corpse, rocket scientists discover that Kerbal, blah de blah de blah, you can read out of your own thing. Basically, it's better. <coughs> it's got, what's it got more? It's got a less of a mass, so it's a lot less heavy. It has the same drag, and that's about it. It's just the fact that it's just a lot better than the other one. So we're going to put that there. <clears throat> and we're base building a very basic ship here, just to show you guys further on. Now structural. Structural kind of things that you attach to your ship, of course. Uh, so you have your adapters, which allows you to put on larger um, fuel tanks. So like that, that will now be able to hold like um, the bigger ones. And then of course you have this one, which I will be showing you later on in the um, future episodes of docking. But we don't need to know that yet. It's basically a connector. It's a hub where you can connect to and it, it's good for about a few ships, about five. With docking, of course. This one is just a simple hull kind of thing, structural panel. <clears throat> you have your structural pylons, which you can attach stuff to. The space duct tape, of course, or the strut connector, as people may call it. That's just to hold things in place. You have these, which are just... <clears throat> oh, fucking hell. These are just modular, so you can attach these and attach stuff onto them and then do it like that. Then you have the decouplers, which of course are used for decoupling your ship. So if we want to stick the smaller decoupler onto it, and put that there. Now we're actually building this up. And then of course you have your stability enhancers, which um, when you start off your ship will be in the air. So it does get a little bit of a jump start and it does stabilize your ship a lot more. You also have this, which fits onto a larger fuel tanks. And then you can use reuse the smaller ones all over again. Um, <clears throat> this one is a bicoupler, so you can have two engines there. And then of course you've got the tricoupler, which you can have multiple engines on there and then do it like that and then that will decouple all at once. You have your radio attachment point, which I can't actually remember what that does. Okay, that's another docking port, that's another docking. Because I haven't tried docking it, so I don't even know half this stuff yet. That's a stack decoupler, just an ordinary decoupler once more. All, all decouplers do the same thing, they decouple. Just in case you didn't know. Uh, oh, I was meant to do one thing. I'm going to put this one onto it so I can show you the very basics of uh, flying and sorting out your stuff. And of course, I'm going to put this engine on it. This engine will lift this up in the air easily. If you choose this engine, it will not lift it up, only if you're in an atmosphere. Or, no, not in an atmosphere, in orbit, in space. That won't lift it up. Um, that will, but we can't put it on it obviously because it's a bit too big. <laughs> that won't lift it up, I don't think. I mean, I haven't tried it, but I doubt it will. Uh, if you have lots of these, it probably will, etc. Uh, etc. Et <clears throat> so, yeah. So, we don't really need anything else. Where was we? We were on aerodynamics. Now, aerodynamics, that is basically so. The easiest way to explain it, if I don't put, say, a utility on this, which would be the parachute, then this is gonna, the air is gonna beat against that circle right there, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna slow it down. So all this aerodynamic stuff is just simply for attaching, of course not that one, but something like that. If we attach that, then the air would just bounce full of that, and we would go, f well, not faster, but we wouldn't go slower, as it were. And then, of course, you have your small control surfaces, which you can use to steer the ship and all that kind of stuff. You have your winglets, which I can actually put on this. don't know why I would, but I am. <laughs> and that's just to control the plane. Same as this winglet, same as that winglet. That one goes on a side, so that one would be like, like that. And then that would go up and down, up and down to control the flow of air. And then of course you've got the wings, you can put wings and stuff and shit. <clears throat> and then of course you have the ram air intake and that just um, 
just something takes in there. There you go. <coughs> Fucking hell. This is for increased fuel flow to connected exhaust engine, so you just put it on there and the air would go through there and process and all that kind of stuff. Then you have utilities. Now in utilities you have your parachutes, you have your landing, you have your wheels, which are for future stuff. You have your hitchhiker storage container, so you can store four kerbals in it and it's pretty fucking massive, as you can plainly see. If we try to attach it, that's how big it is. Uh, we will be using it later on in any space station kind of stuff. Uh, these are photophilatic panels. I'm not sure what they do. Um, the output is electric charges to a second, to two every two seconds. And of course, they're just different, different ones really. And you got your batteries. That's mainly for other stuff, anything electronical. So that'd be for your science stuff and for your mobility enhancers. And then of course we have our parachute, so we're gonna stick that on there. <clears throat> and then of course you have your landing struts and kind of things like that. So if we put these on there. Oh, bastard. There we go. So if we actually I'll show you both of these. So if I put those on oh, sorry about that, I accidentally pressed the uh Windows button which made it pop out so that wasn't too good and then I'll also show you how to use the ladders so we put some ladders on actually uh, instead of using just one ladder and using two <coughs> what we are going to do is we're going to be using these now this is just simply to extend where they can climb down from and that should be perfectly fine I think that should be fine. I hope. I hopefully it is. If it isn't, then uh, well, I'll make sure it is. <laughs> Don't want us to really screw up on the uh, basic tutorial. <clears throat> so there we go. They should be able to jump on it. I hope. If they can't, I'll just laugh to myself. This is also another clampertron to dock. Oh, that's the dock. That's the dock. That's just a shield, so it's easier to dock. That's an electronic propulsion system, so you would put batteries onto it and that would propel you upwards. But I don't think it's very powerful. But that's everything in there. Oh, and you also get these solar panels, which you can um, attach to your ship when you extend outwards. And then, of course, these ones as well. And they get electricity from the sun, which you then can recharge. So you can put like a Z400 onto it and then it would recharge that. Science wise, this is your thermometer. You deploy this uh, on a planet to figure out how hot it is, which serves no purpose. But for you, those who want to be realistic and be like space explorers and go out there and do all that kind of stuff, then you can. <clears throat> so that's always good news. Let me just do this. There we go. Uh, this one is your negative gravioli detector, a device for capturing and measuring the elusive negative gravioli particle used for determining the precise strength of gravitational fields. Warranty voids if used to detect positive gravioli particles. Mm. Yeah, these guys have some humour because it's a negative gravioli detector and it's void if you, gosh, you detect positive ones. <laughs> Press map barometer, a device for measuring the local atmospheric pressure. Warranty void if exposed to air, which, of course, is used to measure. Uh, go. Double C accelerometer, a device for measuring the local acceleration of a, sp a spacecraft, either through movement or the gravity of a planet. Warranty void is shaken, so that measures how fast you're going. Uh, Communitron. The Communitron 16 is a versatile and lightweight antenna suitable for mid moderate range communication. Long range backup communication needs dropping secret government options. Operations. Sorry. Then Communitron 88. The Communitron high gain antenna in model 88 allows for long range high speed communications. That's really about it. That's all. This is all we're going to be using for our ship. So we'll save this as toot sip, as a tutorial ship. <clears throat> save it and then of course the one thing I will show you guys is make sure that this engine is here because that it will show you if you hover over it will show you what part it is so this will show you the fact that this is the first engine this is that engine right here then of course you've got your parachute 
which will only activate if this decouples. So if this decouples and this activates, or you can go either way. If you want to be more, you know, tidy, you could be like, okay, when that activates, add the press space again to activate the um, parachute. So if you want to save that, I've been practicing a bit before just building camera ships, depending on what to show you. Uh, here we are. This is our ship. And of course, you can see the fact that we have our stairs right here. So if we wanted to, we could right click the ladder. I think it's right click, isn't it? Yeah, right click. And you can extend the ladder. And then, of course, same thing with the um, uh, struts. I'm, I'm forgetting what button it is. It's one of these. I know it's going to be one of these. Um, there you go. It was G. Even though I was pressing G like 500,000 times. And that went actually. <laughs> fuck's sake. I would have thought they would have reached, but it didn't. So that's a bit weird and a bit bastardy. If we just want to go straight to here, I I think these ones should reach the ground. I'm hoping they will reach the ground, not to make me look like a complete freaking idiot. Here we go. Save that. I don't know if it's gonna actually actually. I might as well just do symmetry of four and do that so it on nicely. I think that would be fine. How far can I fit? Right there. That should be enough, I hope. I'm going to save it again and launch again and clear the launch pad again. Right, so if we just do this, press G and those will extend and of course lift us off the ground so we will be able to land and I will show you that. But if you, okay, next thing to do. Of course, you don't need to actually extend them. Let's hurt. Oh, fuck. Oh, ah! Okay. Didn't happen. It didn't happen. Okay. Didn't happen. Obviously, it didn't happen. So, I showed you how to do the landing gear. Of course, G is to extend. T. That's the T button. And R is to um, bring up your RCS tank so you can use them. And then your SCS to bring your SCS online. And then it will fly for Well, not fly for you, but make sure they don't shake. But knowing, you guys should know that the fact is that if you do put on, you won't be able to move it. You'll be able to spin the craft, but you won't be able to do anything else. And of course, here's our winglet. And these are controlled through the uh, W and S keys. Now, to throttle up, which is here, as you can see, next to the left of the globe, you can throttle all the way up to 100. And of course, you'll blast off at 100% fuel uh, usage, but you'll go fast. And then of course you have your G-force which will tell you how much G's that the Kerbals are taking. I think they can die if they reach up to here on the G's but I'm not entirely sure. These up here you have your gears, you have your lights and then you have your brakes. So if you're in a buggy or in a plane you can slam on the brakes and it will stop your craft quicker. This is how far off the ground you are, 74 meters above sea level of course. And basically this is why we're 74 up off the ground because we're on this. And then of course you've got your atmosphere. So we're in the thickest part. That's the lightest, that's a lighter part. That's an even lighter part. And then that's the lightest you can be. This of course is how far up you are. I do believe anyway, I'm not entirely sure. Um, surface, this is your speed. This is of course your throttle, your G-force. This is your globe, which you will look at at the moment you're pointing up from the planet if it was all the way around it'll be a darker color and you'll be facing downwards stages uh this there this just shows you what stage you're on so you're on stage two at the moment uh staging of course we'll just do that docking if you want to dock then you can use this to make it easier but i'll show you that later on and then orbit mode is of course just shows you orbit which you don't really need at the moment because we're not actually going into orbit with this thing if you want to learn how to orbit, I will put a annotation in the top right corner, most likely up here, and show you guys. Well, on there you can just go to the video and see how to orbit, basically. But let's get this thing off the ground. So you press space, and that will activate the staging. Now we don't need to go too fast because we just want to go fast enough so that we can actually just fly. 
So of course we have the winglet, so that allows us to fly. But of course, then again, I don't think it wants us to fly entirely. Of course, we can spin. Whee! And yeah, that's about it. I mean, if you put on your uh, SAS, then it will stick into the position you're on, so that you can't mess with it at all. And of course, we can stop right about in the dot there. Oh, not quite in the dot. There we go, and then you press G. You can extend your landing platforms, and then we can actually try and land this way. I am terrible at landing, just to tell you. So don't expect anything too amazing. We don't want to be going this fast. We want to be going like we want to be losing the speed at least. Oh, not by that much, obviously. Otherwise, we'll go back up to near. Oh no, we won. Come on. There we go. Now, I am a terrible at landing, so when we do get to the moon, guys, don't expect me to land it. <laughs> or do it first try at least. Because that will go terribly wrong. Oh, shit, I'm getting a bit too fast there. We do actually want to stop moving sideways. Oh fuck's sake I put the RCS fuel tank on. Oh okay, okay, okay. Stop, stop right there. Stop, 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 stop. Right, so now we can land safely. I say safely. He says safely, but he's not gonna land safely. It's quite clear that he's not going to. <laughs> Come on, slow down. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on. Come on, you gotta land to support my subscribers. Don't make me look like a dick. We are in fact moving a bit too fast to land this. Oh, that was close. <laughs> this is going to take a while. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible at landing. All right, all right, okay. Okay, now these can probably take an impact of about, and they. 12 meters per second, maybe 10. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. I think that that's what these can take anyway. Don't comment me, I don't um, take my word in that though. Because <laughs> next thing you know, you'll be trying and you'll be like, oh, Tony, you told me the wrong thing. Fuck, 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 fuck. Ah, this should not be taking this long. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, this isn't going well, is it? <laughs> it's because I have these wings attached. Oh, what's bringing it down so much? Stop doing that. Right, this should be fine because we're not moving at a bad pace. Okay. Oh, we don't want to be gaining that much speed. How about this? That's fine. Okay, there we go. We're gaining a bit of speed. Uh, there we go. That should be just about correct. Oh, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Ah, it's going to be difficult. I can tell it's going to be difficult. Right. That's, okay, we're almost out of fuel as well, so we need to land this soon. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, it stopped fucking burning. Right now, time to show you the stages. So, <laughs> out of fuel. So you press space, and then that happen, and then of course you press space again, and then it'll go into the next stage. So we didn't manage to land it, but you understand the diff of what I'm trying to explain to you guys. And that's just what the fuck? How's that? How? <laughs> I don't know. What the fuck? Didn't have any fuel in it. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, we'll land safely. You can s oh, we can use physic warp here because we we're not going up that fast. And then, of course, your kerbals will land safely. And now, 
other controls C is to see inside your cockpit of course and then here you can go EVA and you can fly yeah. well not fly but there we go we can let go go yeah we're badasses now you can press R and that turns on your jetpack I do believe it should do anyway but yeah I don't really use the kerbals oh what the fuck there we go of course he won't be able to take off because of gravity You'd think they'd be able to f at least hover like a little bit of the ground. That'd be nice. But yeah, that's the gist of it, guys. That's all you really need to learn to actually um, get KSB going, to get you going on your way. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. I'm Tony. Make sure you comment, rate, subscribe, and like. Um, actually, I already said rate, didn't I? <laughs> Thank you for joining me, guys, and I will see you next time.